So today um, we are going to talk about background checks and the process for background checks for child care facilities. My name is Kayla Bodie and I'm the program manager here for the background check unit with the Division of Child Care. Um, and on the call is also Brenda Burr. She is the program coordinator here for the background check unit. And I think also on my team, um, Cynthia Smith is here and she uh, processes and adjudicates the uh, background checks for both child care um, and sometimes child welfare. And she handles what we call hits. Um, so she's, she does a little bit of everything. So that's my team. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with the process again. Like I said, if you have questions, enter them in the chat or you can stop me at any time. Brenda is gonna be putting contact information and she'll be watching the chat box for any questions that come up. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is who needs a background check? In child care facilities, all staff, including your janitors, your therapists, um, your volunteers, your student observers, need a child maltreatment. All staff, including um, your janitors, your therapists, any staff that are going to be with children, left alone with children, or in a supervisory role, are going to need a criminal and an FBI. You'll see that volunteers and student observers are in a gray area. And this is because depending on how much those volunteers are involved, if they're there every day, um, if they are being, you know, a supervisory role, if they're counted in ratios in any way. And the same with student observers. Is this a student observer that's coming one time to observe for, um, you know, for their class, for their certificate? or are they coming every day? And so the best practice is to always reach out to your licensing specialists, refer to your licensing requirements when you have those volunteers or student observers. Other than that, everyone who is unsupervised, counts and ratio, or has any staff roles, including transportation staff, will need a background check. So when do background checks expire? Your federal FBI expires after five years, the criminal is after five years, and the Arkansas child maltreatment is after two years. And so I'm gonna go back um, and just talk about some updates that we want to remind you of and let you be aware of here from the background check unit. So beginning June 30th, uh, DCCEC will no longer be accepting receipts for the INA subscription. Currently, child care facilities are eligible for the first year subscription amount of $150 to be reimbursed. That's only the first year. Um, we are no longer going to be accepting that after June 30th of 2022. So if you have not sent in your receipts yet um, for that, it's only the first year. If you have not done that or you don't have an INA account, please go ahead and send in those receipts so that you can get reimbursed for at least the very first year. Um, and I'll have Brenda also include the email address in the chat box. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll send out a copy of this slideshow for anyone that would like it as well. And we want to remind you that any potential employees that have lived out of state in the last five years must have a background check um, from those states. If this is not completed, it will delay the process or result in a not approval. If you have questions about out-of-state background checks, please call us. We will be happy to help you and point you in the right direction of what you are needing. If you have an applicant reaching the two-year expiration on your child maltreatments, go ahead and submit those through the central registry. And if you provide summer care and you are getting ready to hire those applicants and, and get your summer um, numbers all ready, if you know that you're gonna have applicants that need out-of-state background checks and you have an idea of who those people are gonna be, 
go ahead and submit that documentation. There are some states that take a significant amount of time to kind of get results back to you or to us. And so um, just to ensure that you'll have those results in time for the summer season, go ahead, start getting those submitted now. Start thinking about your summer programs now. Do we have any questions so far? So now we're gonna talk about disqualifying offenses. No person should be eligible to be a childcare facility owner, operator, or employee if they have pled guilty or been found guilty of any of these offenses. Um, we're looking at the date of conviction. That's five years for a misdemeanor, 10 years for a felony. You can find a full list of these disqualifying offenses in your minimum licensing standards. You'll see it in section 110. We've just got a couple here for an example that we wanted to show you so that you know what you're looking for. If you have an applicant come in and they tell you that they were convicted of one of these charges and you know it was a felony and it was in the last 10 years, then you kind of know what to expect. Um, sometimes people are very honest about what they have on their background and we don't wanna discourage anyone from going ahead and applying, but this will help you to know what you are looking for. And you'll see just a few examples are assault in the first, second, or third degree. We have uh, breaking or entering, computer crimes against minors. And again, these are just a few off of um, that list. There's a very long list in your licensing handbook in section 110. And there's a couple of more here that are disqualifying offenses, endangering the welfare of a minor in the first or second degree, forgery, um, permitting abuse of a minor, theft of property. Now, these are some permanently prohibited offenses. So this means that if this person was found guilty of any of these charges, um, and again, there is a full list in the minimum licensing, section 110, they are not eligible no matter how many years it has been since the date of conviction. Um, and you can see these are arson, capital murder, kidnapping, um, sexual assault, murder. So these convictions are not going to allow that person to work in childcare at all. Even if it was 20 years ago, um, they are just going to be permanently prohibited. Okay. So let's go on and talk about the electronic background check system, also known as NICAR or INA. Um, there are different terms, but we will be going to use the term NICAR, and that's the system that we have here. It is the National Information Consortium of Arkansas. Um, all licensed programs must use this system to do electronic background checks. We no longer accept the fingerprint cards or paper submissions. A background check through the NICAR system includes the state criminal, the federal, and the national sex offender registry check. Providers must register for a subscription online in order to run background checks, and we have a link here for you. And again, we can send this out to anyone who would like it. Just put your email address in the chat box and we'll send you a copy so you have all of these links. You must submit a separate online child maltreatment registry check for each employee. Um, this is completed through the central registry. It is not part of the NICAR system. So you do have to complete two different portals to do all three portions of your background check. Your maltreatment is completely separate. Those are processed by a different unit with the central registry. Does anyone have any questions so far? Now we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of submitting background checks. We've got a couple of screenshots that we can share just so that you can see what you're going to be looking for. So your first step is to complete the request for criminal background check. This is a consent form that you are going to submit. Um, it's gonna have all the applicant's information. The very first uh, box that you see says reason for background check make sure that you are selecting the correct reason. It should say child care, CHI, um, child care facility provider. 
There are other options such as child welfare that some of you may also have. You may provide child welfare and child care. However, if you are completing these for your child care staff, you need to select that um, child care option. If you are going to be having these staff work in the child welfare side of your facility, you would select child welfare. So most of you are only going to be submitting under child care, but please make sure that that is the correct information. If it is not, your applicant will get not approved due to incorrect information. You know, complete this information here, um, the legal name, date of birth, contact information, and it is going to email three pages to the email address that you provide. It's going to be these three pages here. You can see there's a couple of screenshots showing what they look like. The very first page is going to have the applicant's information. So you're going to be seeing the information that you just put in, the social, your facility name, your facility license number, their information. The second page is regarding the state check. So this must be signed and notarized. And the last page is the privacy statement and challenge information. And this is just the signature date. It is crucial to make sure that this information is accurate, especially the second page, which is the notary document. The dates must match. The notary date, the date of the signature must match. The stamp must be clear. Um, the, the date must be completed. Please make sure that this is very clear, that it is accurate information. Make sure that your date's matched. If they do not, the applicant will get not approved. This will typically happen within 48 hours, you'll get a not approval. And that's gonna tell you that there's something wrong with your document. If that happens and you get a not approval within 24 to 48 hours, give us a call, we'll check it for you. We'll let you know if there's an issue and then we'll have you email us a corrected document. So you don't need to resubmit again. Um, you can send that to us. Does anyone have any questions regarding the consent form? Now that your consent form is completed, you've got it notarized and you've scanned it and saved it, you are ready to log into the system. This is what the NICAR system looks. Once you're logged into your account, you are going to click on the search tab. This is going to take you to perform a new search. Here you are going to enter the applicant's information again. And I would recommend having a copy of the applicant's driver's license in front of you because you're going to be, you're going to have to make sure that the applicant's information from the driver's license matches the information that you're putting here. Um, when they go to get fingerprinted, they're going to be using their, their ID to verify them. And if the date of birth or the name does not match, they will be turned away from being fingerprinted. So here you'll see once you put in their information, you have the signed consent form uh, document. This is where you're going to upload that PDF of the three pages. The next selection says purpose. You are going to select CHI for childcare. Um, this should be the only option that you have unless you have dual licenses. So if you have childcare and you also do um, child welfare or you have childcare and you also do dip squaw, uh, if you have different options here, just make sure that you're selecting the correct one of where this applicant will be employed. The FBI information, um, eye color, hair color, again, this is where it's going to be sure that you're putting in the information from the driver's license. So that's just a, another reason to have that copy in front of you. It just makes the process a whole lot easier for you as a provider putting this information in. Any questions on inputting the information here? Great. 
So this is another really important step. It's going to ask you to review your work. Please go through, make sure that the date of birth is correct, the name is correct. Um, just be sure that the spelling, everything matches the driver's license before you submit. If you need to go back, you can go back and um, put in the information correctly. Just reattach your consent form and then submit again. It's going to give you your total here of how much the regulatory check is going to cost. You'll see the state fee of $22. Um, and then you will see your invoice each month will reflect uh, DCCEC does cover a portion of each one of these checks. And so you will see a lesser amount on your total. If you have any questions regarding that or if you see any issues in your account, please give us a call. Once you hit submit, you're going to receive a transaction number and a search ID. So these numbers are one and the same. The transaction number is CHI, and it's always going to have a CHI in front of it. And then zero, zero, and the last seven digits are going to be the same as your search ID number. So you will hear us use those terms kind of intermittently and um, interchangeably, and that's because they are the same thing. It's just that one is used when you are doing fingerprints. So make sure that you print this page or write this down because you're gonna need it for the next step of scheduling fingerprints. Any questions so far? Okay, step three. So this is the last portion of getting these background checks completed for the federal and the criminal. You are gonna go ahead and schedule your fingerprints. Before you do this, go into your account and make sure that the applicant is no longer under your pending tab. So once you've logged in, um, most of you that have an account will see you have tabs at the top. Next to the search tab, there's a pending tab. So be sure that they're not showing there anymore. Um, if they are still in pending, that just means that we are waiting on Arkansas State Police to process their portion of the uh, background check. And until they're moved over under your history tab, they won't be able to be fingerprinted. Uh, this does rare, rarely happen, but we've seen it a few times. And so I just wanted to kind of give that tip and, and make sure that you're not sending them before they are um, over in your history section. And all you're going to do is schedule their fingerprints. You will go to the DHS link and click make an appointment. It's going to give you the um, map where you can put in your zip code and search for the DHS location nearest you. You can select your date and your time. It's very simple. You're gonna just put in the applicant's information, um, their CHI, their transaction number and their name. And a little tip here is that if you do have an applicant that ever gets their fingerprints rejected and they're going back for a second time, this is where you're going to put in that E number that you are going to get from state police. Um, you'll see the very last question that says if you received a notice that your first fingerprints were rejected by FBI, you should have received an E number along with your transaction number and you'll get that letter directly from Arkansas State Police um, that says your E number that'll go here. You're going to get a summary page that you are going to look over and make sure information is correct and then click fingerprinting. And here is where you're going to get to select your location. So as you can see, there are several around the state and you can put in your zip code or your city to check what is closest for you. You're going to put in the applicants information here. Please be sure to put in their email address. If you put in your email address um, after multiple times, it will stop sending the confirmation email to you. So this is going to be their, their personal information that's going to give them that confirmation of when their appointment is, a reminder. And if you need them to send you that email, you can always have your staff forward it over to you. However, um, don't use the same email each time here. And you'll be able to select your time and set your appointment. Make sure 
that your applicant takes their state issued ID and transaction number with them to the DHS location. If they do not have their identification, which can be a state issued ID or a passport, they will be turned away from fingerprinting. They must have that with them. Any questions on the fingerprint process? Okay. The last step to completing your com all three components of the background check. So you've got your state, your federal are now done. You've gotten everything is, is submitted. They are scheduled to go get fingerprints. Um, the very last thing that you want to do is after you get all of this submitted, go over to the central registry and submit the Arkansas Child Maltreatment Registry check. This is done through the central registry and we have the link here for you again. Make sure that the applicant lists five years of residency on these maltreatment checks. And this is what is going to let you know if they need out of state. So if the applicant has lived in Texas last year, um, when they put this information here, you're going to know that you need to go ahead and submit those out of state requests for Texas. And a tip here is when you are submitting these child maltreatment checks, please make sure that you are selecting the second option. The very first option says you are a teacher um, or you're attempting to work for a school in Arkansas. Sometimes providers or applicants select that option and they just go on, um, but you need to select the second option that says potential or current employee of a childcare facility or residential facility um, licensed through the Department of Human Services. And this is so that we have access to view those if you don't submit it through that second option, you'll have to send us a copy of your cleared letter. We won't be able to view it at that time. And that just slows down and delays the checks from being completed. We are gonna talk about some special conditions. Um, some agencies are gonna require the submission of two background checks and two maltreatment checks for one applicant. So these agencies are school districts and uh, agencies under the Division of Developmental Disabilities, which is DDS. So if you are a school district and you have an applicant that works under your pre-K program, you must submit background checks and the child maltreatments to both the Department of Education and the Department of Human Services. So you have two ORIs that you will submit under in your NICAR account. And then with DDS, um, it is the same exact scenario. You're going to submit under CHI and the DDS prefix. Um, both of those are coming through the Department of Human Services, but they are different divisions. If you have questions about whether or not you need to be doing this for your staff or you think that you need um, to be doing additional checks or you just aren't really sure, please give us a call. We are happy to help. We'll look into your account. We'll look into your license to see if you've got everything that you need. Do we have any questions about this? Okay. Now we're gonna talk about out-of-state requirements. Um, this is a big portion of the background check process. It is the biggest delay that we see. So if a potential employee has lived out of Arkansas in the last five years, they must complete checks from all of those states that they've lived in. So for an example, let's say the applicant lived in Texas last year and they lived in Montana the year before that, you will need to complete required checks from both Texas and Montana. So um, make sure that you're completing all three components. So that state, you would need the criminal, the child maltreatment, and the sex offender registry. Just as you would for Arkansas, you would need to complete the same for that state. However, there are special uh, circumstances for each state. And that's kind of what we are going to talk about today. We have a link here to the Interstate Child Care Background Check contact list, and this link is going to give you links and information and 
um, you will see that there are some states that are listed in red with an NFF uh, next to them. These are national fingerprint file states. So you won't need a criminal background check for those states. And I know that this can be confusing. Um, if they're listed in red, they do not require the criminal background check. Those are included with our federal checks. So to make this easy, we have created a uh, link on our website, and I'm gonna have that on the next slide so that you can go and you can click on the state that you're needing and see exactly what it is that you need to run, which results do you need? That way you're not having to try to figure out, okay, wait, this state needs this, this one needs that. And um, we try to make it as smooth and simple as possible. So right in the middle of this page, we have our out-of-state background check link on our website. It's a drop down where you can just click on the state and it's gonna give you the information needed. And there are a couple of special conditions. So Tennessee and Oklahoma, both of those states, our unit will complete. We have access to run their out of state um, and get their results. So we will complete those here. For California, they are a closed record state. So you do not need to submit any records for California. And then for Arizona, you will only need the child abuse and neglect. Even though they don't partake in the NFF portion of it, um, they don't release criminal records. So there's nothing that you will get from Arizona as well. And again, to make this simple, we've created this list just so that you can click on that state and see exactly what you need. There's no guessing. And a common question that we get are, what about applicants have lived in a different country and no results are needed for those applicants? We have any questions so far about out of state results? Okay. And here are the, um, the email address and the mailing address and information for where we send the results to. So if you get those results, you can send them on to us. If they require that our information be put on the request, you can enter the information that you see here on the screen. And again, please contact us if you have any questions regarding this process. We'll be happy to help. So we can't stress it enough. These are the key takeaway points to remember. Um, a staff may not begin work until the Arkansas State Criminal Record Check has been returned as satisfactory. So this means that your overall NICAR status is going to be in provisional. The individual must always be supervised by another staff member that is approved um, in the NICAR system. So once they are put into a provisional status, that means the, the Arkansas State Criminal has come back, everything is good, they can start working. They always need to be supervised. So just keep that in mind. Please log into your NICAR account to see the status of your applicant. Potential staff cannot begin working if they are in a pending overall status. Make sure all information is correct before submitting. The applicant's name and date of birth must match their state issued ID or passport. Please notify the background check unit when staff members are no longer employed if they are in a provisional status. This helps us kind of clear them off of our list of applicants that need to be worked on. Um, this helps clear out our system so that we can hopefully eventually archive these applicants. So if you have someone that's in a provisional, they haven't gotten fingerprinted or they're waiting on some out of state and they quit or you let them go, please give us a call. Let us know that they're no longer there. That way we can update the information in our system. And um, whenever you email the background check unit, please include the applicant search ID number. This will help make the process a lot quicker when we're looking into it. So um, you can put that in the um, subject line, you can put it in the email, whatever works best for you. Just try to include that so that we know what we're looking for um, and we're not just trying to search by a name. So we've got some important phone numbers here. Um, we have the main phone number for our background check units. And then we have the NICAR subscription account. 
line. Um, this is if you are needing some assistance with your account, um, your invoice information, payment information. We also have the NICAR help desk. So if you're having a problem getting logged into your account, you need to reset your password, or you need help adding users on your account, um, you will contact the NICAR help desk for that. And then the central registry phone number is here as well if you have any issues with your child maltreatment checks. And the last thing that we wanted to talk about today was possible delays. So these are some of the delays that you may see and why you're seeing them. If the applicant is impending, um, this more than likely means that the state criminal report needs additional information and we will be sending out a letter to that applicant. Um, if it is impending for longer than 24 to 48 hours of uh, business hours, then you know you can contact us, we can check in on it um, and let you know kind of what's going on with that applicant. You should not have very many that you ever see in a pending state, but if they are, that could be a possible reason of the delay. So if your applicant is in provisional and they've been in provisional for a significant amount of time, it could be that they have not um, completed their fingerprints. It could be that the first set were rejected and they're having to be resubmitted again. Once that happens, we do have to wait for Arkansas State Police to send us the results um, by mail. And it also does come <clears throat> um, as a physical hard copy. So the process is just a little bit longer. Could also be that the federal report requires additional information from the applicant and we may have sent them a letter it could also be the child maltreatment has not been completed. So that's through the central registry. If that hasn't been done, we won't be able to update them or the applicant needs out of state um, results. So the not approved delays, um, <clears throat> these are gonna be your, your most common. If you get these errors within you know, 24, uh, up to 72 hours of submitting, then it's more than likely going to be that there is an issue with your documentation. So it could be that the consent form is incomplete. There was only a few pages uploaded. Um, it could be the completely wrong form that has been uploaded. It could be that the notary stamp is missing or the dates do not match or the date of birth does not match. Um, the applicant um, may have been submitted more than one time. So it's a duplicate entry from the same facility. Those are all reasons that you're going to get a quick turnaround on a not approval. Uh, the last one, so if the applicant um, has been submitted and then within 45 days you do not get them fingerprinted and submit your maltreatment, they're going to be not approved. So we, we try to give ample amount of time to go down and get fingerprinted and get your maltreatment submitted. Those you get back normally the same business day. Um, so after 45 days, we will move them to not approve. Most of the time, these are gonna be your errors. Um, we do a, a 20 day due process timeframe for applicants who have an ineligible um, you know, status if they have a offense that disqualifies them for working in childcare. It's going to be a fairly significant amount of time before you get that not approved status. So if you see that quickly, give us a call, ask us, you know, you can give us a search ID. We're more than happy to look into it and we will tell you what's missing and what is needed. You will receive an email from us um, notifying you if there is something missing. You won't receive anything from us with uh, detailed information if the consent form is incorrect. You'll just get that email that says, you know, that the applicant status has changed to a not approved uh, overall status. So, if you have a question and, and you think, you know, you know, why is this person in provisional for, you know, two weeks or why did this person get not approved, please give us a call. We, we want to help and um, we are, you know, that's what we're here for. We want to help you make sure that you have everything that you need. So here's our phone number again. Um, that's the main line. You can ask for the background check unit. And um, of course, also our contact information is in the chat box. Do we have any questions today? Um, don't see any in the chat box. Does anyone have any questions? I know we had kind of a small group today. 
Um, we do do these calls monthly, the last Thursday of every month. They are also recorded on our website. So you can go back and watch the, the last months if you, you know, need to, or if you have um, colleagues that you would like to send this to, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, please also send them the link to this live um, meeting that we have. We would love to have more providers get on and, and it's a great time to ask questions directly to our staff. Okay, if we don't have any questions, I think that's about everything that we have. Brenda, do you have anything that you would like to add? I do not. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you being here um, and just reach out to us if you have any questions and we'll be glad to help you, okay? Okay, well, if we don't have anything else, um, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you all taking time out of your day. Um, and again, please call us if you have any questions. We're here to help um, and share with your colleagues. We would love to, to have more providers on our next uh, month's call and have a great rest of your day.